again. <laughs> Enjoyed meeting you all in depth this afternoon. Um, quite a few of you brought up the subject of record companies and whether you could make any money anymore or whether it was worth it or what, what their role was in, uh, in, in this business we're all in. So um, I thought it would be good to get Sebastian to come and talk to you, who's involved in some really cool underground labels like Get Physical and Desolate and um, great stuff. Um, just to give you a little bit more understanding about the mechanics of what it's like to run um, you know, small labels, underground labels in, in 2014. So, Sebastian. <laughs> Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, he already introduced me. My name is Sebastian uh, Bohnenberger. I'm from Germany. That's why I have a bit complicated surname. Yeah, I'm working for a company called Ask My Management, which is mainly a management company looking after people like Loco Dice, Chris Liebing, Guti, all the Desolat people. And we have also a big booking agency also looking after Dice, Chris, um, Guti, Gregor Trescher, Panpot, so very underground driven DJ agency. And under the roof of Ask My Management, there is my part, which is called uh, Music and Media. This is the part of Ask My Management I'm leading and I'm looking after. And we basically do everything related to music or selling music or music content in the uh, big world of electronic music or um, label business. And we look after labels like Get Physical and all the sub labels. There's a lot. Mood from Nicole Mudaba, Homage from Monkey Safari, um, uh, what else? A few others. And besides that, I'm running my own record label, Great Stuff, since 12 years now. And uh, yeah, they also ask my management is doing all the back office. And yeah, this is basically my um, story. So I'm a record guy since over 20 years now. Great Stuff is in its 12th year now. And all of the other labels you probably know. And yeah, I'm here for uh, discussing with you or talking with you, answering questions about how a record label or selling music in general works. Um, so I, I don't know if any of you have like specific question about special parts of a label or uh, running a label in general. Just uh, one basic thing is how can you um, earn money through selling music these days that's basically two parts which is one part the master rights which is you do your tracks you produce your tracks you give it to a label you see you sign into a label and this label sells the record and you get your royalties the other part is um, the publishing part so I don't know if you are familiar with publishing and general publishing rights what does publishing actually mean what is a copyright from your tracks? This is basically also a big um, issue or a big thing uh, these days when you sell your music and you still can earn a lot of money for it. So when your track is played on the radio, you're getting money for it. When your track is on an advertisement, you're getting money for it. And even if a track is just sold as a download or on CD or on a compilation, you should get your um, copyright for it, so the publishing for it. So. Is, does anyone know what publishing actually is or do you or does nobody really know what, pub what publishing is? Because what I found in the past years since I'm doing and signing records and doing records is that a lot of people don't actually know how copyright works, how publishing works. Yeah, so for example people are sampling and uh, releasing music they are not really allowed to release and a lot of uh, you are all familiar with Beatport I guess so a lot of tracks on Beatport with fully sampled tracks in there and uh, which is from a legal point of view not really right and you re you can't really do it but because so many people just do it um, all of the young producers they don't really understand that if they sample something and they get copyright infringement from YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever, or even somebody calling them up and telling them, look, you sampled something, this is just not right, you can't do it without the permission, um, which is then the, these people don't understand and they say, yeah, but everybody's doing it. So if you look on Beatport into the top 100, it's just a lot of tracks which are not really cleared. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is, I think, one of the main issues these days that young producers don't really understand the the legal way of releasing music because there is uh, there is still a legal way yeah and the bigger a track gets the more problems it can cause if there's an uncleared sample in there 
Yeah. So again, there are many ways of solving this. I'm always the first advice I always give young producers is don't sample. Yeah. Just do everything yourself. This is the most easy thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is your copyright. This is your song. This is your music. Nobody can steal it from you. Even if somebody samples your record, it's still your own personal copyright. So you can always sue them. You can always go to them and say, look, this is my idea, my melody, my whatever. Um, this is, the, of course, the most easy um, solution for this. The second thing is that you can always replay stuff, yeah, which means then you, you only uh, the only copyright you would infringe is the is the publishing rights. So you have to go to the publisher and ask for okay, I'm I, I'm replaying this melody, which is from I don't know uh, Madonna or whatever, and you ask for the permission. And the last um, solution would be to uh, really um, request all the rights for the sample. And you always have to request the master rights and the publishing rights, which mainly costs a lot of money and um, takes a lot of time. Yeah? So, but I, this is has not really something to do with the label business in general, but it's very important for you guys that you always have in mind there are always two rights you actually sell to a label, which is the publishing right and the master right. And these days, if you look up a contract with a record label, you will probably in most of the deals find that they also want to sign the publishing with you. Yeah. So they can, there are also a lot of ways to, to do this from a um, producer point of view. You can either go to a big publisher and uh, sign an exclusive deal with them yeah, for everything you do on every label and they have to make sure that they um, they get all the rights everywhere around the world and get all the money from everywhere around the world for you or you do it track by track which is mainly done these days from a record label point of view because for a record label it's very very important to keep every first of all every right under one roof and the second thing is to have the possibility to earn money through every little angle which is there yeah, like 20 years ago you had it was pretty simple yeah? you didn't have downloads you just had physical product which was vinyl and CD yeah vinyl you all know CD you also all, all know yeah this is something which will probably disappear sooner or later but back in the days it was pretty easy so you had your very strict ways of releasing a record yeah which means you first did it in a club from club label you first did a club promotion through vinyl you send it out to 150 200 people worldwide to the biggest ones they send you back results they had charts there were special dance charts in germany for example or <coughs> you probably still know the um the uk dance charts and um second thing was you promoted it to the radio and if the radio picked it up and you felt okay this could be a big track so a hit yeah you started to think about releasing it on CD and then again you had a pre-roll of like four six eight weeks to press the CD to do, do a little bit of promotion to do sales promotion f through your distributor who was trying to get your CD or your vinyl into the different shops yeah so actually still shops where people go to and ask for physical product yeah which is not here um, these days so this is mainly the big big difference running a label these days is that you really have to work every shop, every possibility to release a record differently. Yeah, so um, selling music on Beatport is something totally different than selling music on iTunes because people who are buying on Beatport are totally different people than the ones who are buying on iTunes. Same with Spotify, streaming people who stream music or on YouTube. Even people who download your stuff illegally uh, from our point of view are a good thing because they still consume your music at some point they are not buying your music anyway so um, but still they are fans of your label they're fans of your music and if somebody this is our personal point of view there are other labels really working against illegal downloads but we think okay rather keep even those fans happy because these are the ones who come to the clubs where your people play. These are the ones who buy your t-shirts. These are the ones who probably buy your stuff sooner or later because they really like your label. And if you as label go to them and say, or even sue them, they will probably, if, 
if they see a get physical night somewhere and they have been sued by a get physical because of illegal download, they will never ever go to the night because they say those whatever suit me. So um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, um, help them. Yeah. So this is basically from a, for, for a label these days. That's why a label still is from my point of view a very important thing and it's much more um, there's much more about running a label than just put it up on beatport yeah it's much more there's a much much bigger world um uh, in, in 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 the dance scene you have as i just said you have spotify which is becoming more and more important for us you have itunes which is very important as well you have youtube you have all the different possibilities to market your own music so this is very important these days to run your own record label. Also, what is very important from a label point of view, what I think is you have um, in the underground, you have two different types of label. One, I always called it the business card label, yeah, which is a marketing tool for a bigger DJ, minus there's a lot for Dice, uh, Cocoon, what it used to be for Sven, um, a few others, yeah, Zuara for uh, for Koyu, etc. So this is more they the, the, they it, it's more about the whole picture of the label, artwork, good promotion, label nights. So they would rather say, okay, I'm investing in a new artist. I'm gonna do the perfect artist development for the artist. And when this artist is big, he plays for my nights and he's filling up the nights. If I'm selling the music, it just uh, of course, if, if I'm selling the music, it's cool, fine, I'm happy about it. But if I'm not selling the music or not recoup the stuff I'm investing, I still invest it in something where I get the payback from ticket sales or merchandising or whatever. And then you have the other label, which is um, uh, basically the label which needs to sell music, yeah, so which is signing a lot of records in. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, tries to sell the music and uh, really puts all the effort on the marketing of selling the track rather than building up a brand where they do club nights, etc. So for them it's all about selling the tracks and not only selling the track at one time, also working your back catalog, doing back catalog compilations. You probably all are aware of those big 50 track compilations on, on Beatport. It's some, some people are like, I say over um, overdoing it yeah so it's just too much but if you have a big catalog as a label you always have the chance to really recoup your investment through selling your catalog again with cool compilations there are even good ways to do it yeah. so yeah this is basically uh, the whole story of selling music through a record label um, you probably I don't know how many of you have already a record deal I know some have uh, uh, so um, I don't know if you have also if you really want to know how signing a record works or what parts of the contract you have to be will be aware of or what you want to know um, so yeah but I don't know I just uh, maybe it's good that you just ask me questions and I try to answer them as good as possible Can I ask of course hi Sebastian I wanted to ask in the near future I want to run a label so in short what are your best three tips for me the most important thing is of course uh, create good music yeah so the product has to be good it has to be good music it has to be a good artwork there has to be a good um, guideline direction for everything that's a very very important thing the second thing what I think is very important is um, keep your release schedule yeah so if you do it once a month do it once a month don't do it every two weeks four weeks six weeks try to keep an, a constant uh, a constant release schedule if it's every eight weeks cool no problem then it's every eight weeks don't try to force releases try to have your first three four five releases ready and always uh, try to um, pre-work your releases that they are done because at the moment a lot of uh, shops iTunes always did but now for example Beatport requests all the infos four to, f four to six weeks prior to release yeah, so you always have to be very on point so the, the release schedule is the most important thing for a record label and the last thing is always make sure you um, do all the right situation correctly 
Yeah? Because if somebody sues you for a sample, it's going to be a big problem, for sure. Thank you very much. <coughs> Why is it important? <coughs> Why is it important to keep that schedule? Because... That does it matter when... If, po if people are following you, the label, oh, there's a new release. Or do... Or what? Why do you think it's important? I think I think it's Im the most important thing from my point of view is that the fans out there are getting used to your constant releases, yeah. And there is a big difference if you release it after two weeks and then you just stay away for four weeks and then you release something in the next week because, as I just said, twenty-five thousand releases every week. So you have to make sure that the fans you have they are very on time because. If somebody is willing to buy music from you, they want to buy music straight away. Yeah. So, for example, it doesn't help anybody if you pr if you promote your record two weeks prior the release on SoundCloud because if the people are listening to the music and they say, "Oh, that's a great track, I'm going to buy it," and they can't buy it on the web, they will never ever put it on the side or just write it down somewhere because there's so much music out there that you really have to be on time for everything and the release schedule is the thing which you have in your own hands yeah what you don't have in your own hands if is for example is beatport featuring my track is track source be featuring my track is itunes doing something is i don't know there are so many uh, so many possibilities and uh, with all these shops that something fails that the only uh, sure thing you, or you or the only thing you can be sure about is your own release schedule So I think this is why it's very very important That you work and on point you take your time and you really have something set up for uh, The next six months. Maybe it's a very German way of thinking as well, but it's a it really helps to run a record label <laughs> I saw somewhere an article on that on Beatport some labels were um, managing to get uh, s some deal with Bitport and were um, not really selling uh, most of their tracks. I'm not going to mention any label, but they were on top. Maybe they were um, in one month, they got the, the top uh, chart of Bitport, but not really by themselves, but with the help of Bitport. I don't know if you... With the help of Beatport? Or with the help of uh, other people, or with the help of agencies also buying buying tracks. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I mean, it's a, that's a, that's a, it's basically a big rumor. Everybody is sure about. Yeah. So there are labels buying their own records. Or it's not really the labels. It, it's more the artists. And why are they doing this? Because Beatport is a multiplicator, multiplicator, multiplicator for for shows. Yeah. So if an artist is in the top 10 of Beatport, doesn't matter if he sells good or, or it's not about the label, it's about the artist. He can go out there and say, yeah, look, I have a top 10 uh, 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 record on Beatport. And all the promoters say, wow, yeah, good. Everybody wants to hear you, so I'm going to book you. So this is the main reason why artists uh, buy their own releases or get their own releases bought by somebody else. Yeah, it's. To be honest, um, I I don't really know if it's true. Sometimes you see tracks appear very quick in the top 10 and then disappear very quick again, which is an indicator that they probably get somebody to buy it because how the Beatport chart works is they, I don't know how it, how it exactly works, but it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a combination of the sales um, day by day by day by day yeah so even if you're in the top 10 or in the top 50 for for, for for 20 days and you're not really selling loads on one day you're still in the top 50 because of some uh, whatever how they how, how they do it but if somebody comes and says, yeah I'm gonna buy 150 tracks on one day then it's boom up there everybody thinks oh that's great but then the real public comes and in the end um, judges if a track is good or not yeah because then if it disappears again you will probably you don't have these uh, at source uh, and buys anymore and then the people are not buying the music so nobody knows everybody is telling rumors yeah the web is full of uh, rumors for everything and some well a lot of jealous people are out there as well so sometimes it's it's true sometimes it's not true so I can't really. We are not doing it, <laughs> but it's from an artist's point of view. It's a. I think. I think it's very. Um, 
because what we figured figured out, I even uh, did parties myself, and most of the artists think that Beatport is very, very relevant and important for the people out there, but it's actually not true. Go to a club today. Go to go to just say on the door at uh, Privilege later on and ask 500 people, do you know Beatport? I bet 95% won't know Beatport. Mm -hmm. They never ever heard about it because Beatport is no end consumer port. It's it's no end consumer site. Yeah, the consumers they are using Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, or downloaded illegally. They don't know Beatport. Yeah, Beatport is a DJ shop. Yeah, so this is something sometimes what these these artists for, uh, keep forgetting that if you are top on Beatport doesn't necessarily mean that you are filling up clubs. Yeah, so we have this in Germany. We have this. Um, uh, I always call them like SoundCloud DJs. Yeah, they are big on SoundCloud and they are huge. They are filling up clubs. They are not selling any record. They just give away their stuff for free. Yeah, so it's a total different way of uh, uh, how you market yourself. Besides the record label, yeah. So yeah, Beatport is uh, for a label. It's <coughs> that's what I've just heard Pete saying as well. For a label, it's very very important. Um, when was it? Like ten years ago, eight years ago, it was the big big solution for all of us. Yeah, we were like, oh yeah, you can actually sell music again. Great. Yeah, cool. Uh, a light on the end of the tunnel. Um, and yeah, but in the end, it's only one small part of the big picture for a label. Speaking, speaking of rumors, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a saying of, that if you sample something, it's legal within three seconds or five seconds, and oh, that wow. does also. Can you I, can I you tell how can you can you tell how it is? Yeah, it's 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 amazing. I love this rumor. No, it's not true. <laughs> if you sample something, you sample something. Yeah, you have to ask the permission of the copyright owner. There is no three seconds rule. It's just not there. And Trust me, I have a lot of experience with that. I, I had one record where they sampled just one guitar riff, like bum, just not even one second. Uh, and uh, yeah, the original sample holder or the original master holder, he called me up and I said, look, this is a sample. I said, oh no, it's not sample. There's no sample. The producer didn't tell me about it. So yeah, that's why in a normal record deal, you guarantee the record label that you own all the rights on your track. Yeah, which means if you don't tell the record label you sampled something and the record label is sued by somebody, the record label can actually go back to you and blame everything on you and sue you. Yeah? That's in, a, uh, in an ideal world. In a non-ideal world, it's probably no, no record label could ever sue an artist because the artist would go like, yeah, I don't have any money, so it's gone. Or in a... In a normal world, the original sample holder, they won't sue you. They will come to you and ask for a solution for it. Yeah. So what I had to do is I had to pay all the royalties, which were meant to be for the artist. I had to pay them to the original sample guy. Yeah. So yeah. no three seconds, not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any specific, I mean, in, in a contract with uh, the record deal, um, are there any specific details to look for or um, I mean because it's all legal stuff that we ordinary people <laughs> don't really understand sometimes um, I have to be careful what I'm saying because maybe I want to sign something from you <laughs> <laughs> um, well actually there are two ways or what I know um, record deals these days which is basically the 50 50 deal after costs yeah so the record label tells you Okay, we do 50-50, we take down all of the costs before, but and afterwards we do 50-50. So if you do something like this, from I would suggest an artist um, to ask for a fixed number for these costs. Because if you just have like um, costs in there, it's a very wide uh, um, area, right? Yeah. So you go like, okay, I'm, if you, uh, I'm doing a press promotion for 5,000 euros and I take this down from your royalty so you will never ever see a royalty. Um, or the other deal is, it's not a 50-50 deal, you just get a normal royalty rate between 20, normally between 20 and 30 percent and the record label covers all the costs for like artwork, promotion, whatever. 
Yeah, so these are basically at the moment um, uh, the two deals which are out there. I'm talking about underground labels. Yeah, as soon as it comes to a major label, there are a lot of other things to look for. Yeah, but this is, I think this is something totally different. Yeah, so a major label again uh, works totally different than an underground label, and they look after so many other things because selling music through a major label means a lot of other retailers and stuff. So, but this is something very complicated. You w should always ask a lawyer. And you should also for 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 other um, uh, uh, for other deals, you should always ask a lawyer. Or at least try to find somebody who can really explain you, or even ask the label, explain me what it's all about. Yeah, what is a third-party royalty? What is an in-house compilation? What does it mean to uh, uh, deduct um, uh, neighboring rights? Yeah, what are neighboring rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think a record label is should be there for an artist to help him. Yeah, we are not here to um, rip off artists. We're here to work together very close with artists and uh, try to help them with their career and try to sell music. And the best contract is the one which you sign and you put. Um, somewhere and you never look at it again because as soon as you start to look on a contract there are problems <laughs> after you signed it no. anything else yeah, do, <coughs> I think it's a common thing to have engineers uh, that's not a bad word um, in my opinion I think it's common um, do you work with engineers for artists do, can they come to you and say I have made this track I need to get it finished and you will help them do that uh, or normally no I can understand why people are doing it but we don't we in in our labels we don't have engineers who are uh, finishing tracks for artists yeah I mean we have engineers that if uh, bigger artists for example <laughs> don't really have the time to uh, do their own tracks or at least be in the studio all the time then we bring them together so we try to always help from an A&R point of view but if you are a newcomer, it's not really common for us to help them with like ghost producers or engineers. Engineers is the nicer word. <laughs> the most common question that we have these days is actually how to send an email to your address. If it's gonna, I mean, I'm, I just don't know how many emails you, you, you get every day, so yeah. It's horrible. It's really bad uh, how many demos you get, which again shows, I also heard Pete talking about it, that it's, I think it was with you talking about how easy it is, these, easy it is these days producing music. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good quality, but you can easily produce music. From my point of view, it's always, the most important thing is keep it short, keep it very informative, keep it positive, keep it nice and gently. Um, don't ever, ever uh, send it to a lot of uh, labels at the same time and just put them in CC. Yeah, you will probably, <laughs> it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm receiving so many emails for like 250 record labels, I will never ever listen to the record because um, if somebody send, wants to sign a record on one of our labels, I really want this artist to be on my label. Yeah, this is what it's all about. So. It's, yeah, I want to release my music, I don't really care who is releasing it, I just send it everywhere. That's the message what you get if it's, yeah. if it's CC. If you get a personal email with like, hey, my name is blah, 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 I'm doing music since this and this and this, I did it here, did it there, be just gently and nice and try to sell yourself. That's the most important thing. Yeah? I'm getting emails from listen my demo and the mm -hmm. link. Yeah, I'm not listening to this. And I'm uh, getting emails with like uh, even people setting up s streaming sites yeah where they go like, where, where they have their own stream in a in a in a cv site it's it's it, it's cool yeah ben, because then you see somebody's really making an effort to sell himself and this is this is the most important thing and don't s send mp3s yeah so and uh, if i have the choice between downloading stuff and streaming stuff send the stream stuff send soundcloud links yeah this is because then you can just you can listen to it from everywhere if you have to download it you have all the demos on your uh on your system it's uh, a lot of a lot of data <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah anything else no uh, 
I would like to ask a little bit. <laughs> of course. Is it true that in these days it's really hard to sell music and uh, music is just made for the, uh, promote the artist to get gigs? As I said before, you have uh, uh, two different ways <laughs> of running a label and selling you music. A lot of artists are not, uh, well, then it's not really selling you music. A lot of artists are doing the music just to get gigs, of course. The more underground it gets, the less sales you will have. So it always depends what kind of music you want to do. If you are doing Avicii stuff or Hardwell or whatever, he is much more focused on selling tracks also. But if you do like underground, if if you take Chris as example, Chris leaving with uh, CLR, yeah, mm -hmm. Chris doesn't look. He doesn't. Of course, he w they always. Everybody wants to sell music, but if Chris doesn't sell his music, but uh, uh, presents his brand, presents his crew, presents CLR, presents some very quirky, interesting underground techno stuff, which 50 people. Uh, buy and 250,000 people listen to then um, he's he's very happy that's the thing he wants to achieve yeah for a label like great stuff it's more about selling the music so first of all we sign different music but um, then it's about selling music so we, we we are doing marketing to sell the music not really to sell our brand it's not about our brand it's about the artist and and and, and the track itself yeah so it's hard to say because um, um, Realistically, selling music is very, very difficult these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. But still, why are you running a label? Yeah, if you, in the end, you want to sell your music. Yeah, yeah, that's I the whole message. <laughs> I heard uh, producers talking that they didn't care. Do people send the, his music illegally or buying it? Uh, they just, they are just happy that people are listening to yeah. it so yeah that's what i also said it's it's about yeah. uh to con the consumers yeah. Yeah. so but then it's it's also again about the brand about the artist and the brand of the label yeah mm. it's difficult yeah running a label is really difficult yeah, it's it always has thought. been difficult but it's uh yeah more <laughs> difficult these <laughs> days <laughs> yeah. okay right, thank, thank you thank you, thank you. thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Publishing. Did you ask a question?